Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm talking all about immune health and the benefits of Ganoderma, which is also known as Reishi Mushroom, with my guest, Dr. Bob. So Dr. Bob, for those who don't know, his full name is Robert A. Rakowski, and he is a chiropractor, board certified kinesiologist, certified clinical nutritionist, certified biological terrain instructor, and the clinical director of the Natural Medicine Center in Houston, Texas. In addition to running a busy practice, Dr. Rakowski has lectured internationally for over 29 years on various topics related to natural health and lifestyle medicine, happiness, and success. He's appeared on numerous television programs and international radio talk shows. He's a recognized expert in functional endocrinology and in-house diagnostic procedures to assess nutrition status. His clinical experience ranges from treating elite professional athletes to critically ill patients with a variety of cancers and autoimmune diseases. So welcome to the podcast, Dr. Bob. Well, thank you, Vivian. I'm excited. I think we're going to have a great conversation and add value to our wonderful world. Me too. Before we get into the subjects in a bit more detail, I want to know about your background and how you got into or why you got into the health and wellness world to begin with. You know, it really started with a, a couple of mishaps in my life. So I was, uh, you know, as a teen, uh, you know, I, I had very sadly the standard American diet. And that, by the way, the acronym there is SAD because it was terrible. It was cheeseburgers, it was French fries, it was chocolate shakes. And my parents were somewhat help nuts. And I, you know, like most teenagers didn't listen to my parents. And my dad said, you know, if you keep eating like that, it's going to catch up with you. Well, I was in college and I was playing sports and I realized that my energy was just terrible. You know, people that I, I knew I was a better athlete than I, you know, suddenly they were running circles around me. And I thought, OK, I'm going to do a little experiment for one week. I'm going to eat better and I'm going to see how I feel. So, you know, my idea of a good diet just was eliminate the junk, which, by the way, is a great start. Uh, and I could have certainly done a lot better with my choices, but I felt so much better at the end of that one week. You know, now we're over 40 years past that. And I, you know, said, okay, I'm going to study this. I'm going to find out how to really fine tune it and really fine tune the machine. And that was my journey into nutrition. Uh, as a chiropractor, uh, I was in engineering school. My first degree is electrical engineering. And I got hurt and saw, you know, I went to the medical doctor. That's what I knew to do. He gave me muscle relaxers and painkillers and put my neck in a brace and my arm in a sling. Well, I went out on a date and I had one drink and I fell asleep behind the wheel of my car at 55 miles an hour. So very, very fortunately, my date grabbed the wheel, shook me, I pull over to the side of the road and, and she looked at me and she said, what happened? I said, I don't know, I, I just passed out. She said, well, I think I should drive home. I said, well, I think that's a really good idea. So when I got home, I picked up the bottle of pills and I was never one for pills, but then I read it for the first time. It said, don't mix with alcohol, don't operate heavy machinery, may make you drowsy. Uh, and I realized this almost killed me. So I flushed the, the medications down the toilet and I started a rehab program to start get myself back. And a friend said, you know, you should really go see a chiropractor. Uh, and the chiropractor made such a big difference so fast that I, I started asking questions. You know, what's this all about? How does one become a chiropractor? Uh, and ultimately I became one. So, Amazing. Yeah. Fun, and fun journey. I always ask, especially my guests who have been in the industry for decades, like you have, what your approach to nutrition is, because there's so much um, that comes out every single year and trends and fads. Um, so just with everything that you know, what's your stance now? Obviously, it's a little bit individual to the person, but just an overall kind of um, approach to diet and nutrition. Well, I'm going to give an overall snapshot and I'm going to turn back the clock a little bit. So I was co-lecturing with an author in Orlando, Florida in early 2000. His name is Barry Sears. And he wrote a very popular book called The Zone at the time. And he put up a picture of the U.S. food pyramid, which had, by the way, nine to 11 servings of processed carbohydrate, genetically modified gluten grains on the bottom, right? I mean, we're talking breads, pastas, cereals, terrible stuff. Uh, and his comment was about that pyramid, if ever there was a terrorist-like plot designed to destroy the health of the world, this would be it. And so I thought, wow, he's right. Let me create my own food pyramid. So at the base of the pyramid is food. And there's a couple simple guidelines. If God made it, it's okay. If man made it, stay away. And that's a paraphrase of a quote from Jack LaLanne. 
And then Michael Pollan in his book, In Defense of Food, he said, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Now I'm gonna say eat real food, clean food, every color, every day, not too much, not too often, in a way that honors your genetics, your physiology, and your health goals. That fills in a lot of things, but we start with food. Then as we move up the pyramid, we have superfoods. Then there's either medical foods or functional foods on the next run, followed by a multivitamin, multimineral, omega-3s, probiotics, and then vitamin D. And those are actually what I would call the magnificent seven rungs of nutrition. And I love sevens. And it just happens to fit in perfectly. So yeah, that's my philosophy on nutrition. And that's really where it, where it came about. But every program that I create for a patient at any stage, it could be an elite athlete, it could be someone critically ill. We want to cover food, superfood, functional food, multi, omega-3, probiotic, D3, and we're there. My seven is my lucky number as well. So I like <laughs> that you've included that, but I'm interested, what's the difference between a superfood and did you say functional food? And what are some examples of those? Sure. So a superfood is like a food, but a superhero version of it. So it has all the fabulous 50, all the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, proteins, carbohydrates, fat, fiber, and water, and in a dose that makes a difference towards human health, but also very specific compounds that have identified within it that have massive health benefit. So the top consensus superfood on the planet right now is called Ganoderma lucidum, also known as reishi, also known as lingchi. But aside from being complete nutrition, it's got 430 unique molecules within it that modulate the inflammatory process by 13 different mechanisms, alkalize the system, uh, is profoundly anti-infective, anti-yeast, antivirus, antibacteria, antifungal, proven against 16 different types of cancer. You know, there's a, a, a virus that's getting a lot of press these days, and we can't even mention it without getting censored. But if you go on pubmed.gov and type in Ganoderma lucidum plus, like you're expanding your search, and any virus you want to mention, including a popular one now, you might be very surprised that there's a very well-controlled study from Proceeds National Academy of Science that shows that this superfood is really good for that. Now, a functional food is actually, superfoods are, are God-made, but a functional food is a man blend. And there's over 80,000 PubMed references on functional foods, but they take a, a really good macronutrient source. It could be something like grass-fed organic whey, or it could be a very low allergy potential uh, plant protein like pea protein, rice protein. But then they blend in some other herbs or special compounds that give it health benefits above and beyond what we, you would expect in regular foods. Uh, and there are both functional foods and medical foods designed with a very specific goal in mind, including hormone modulation. So there's a, a medical food which I use, which is proven to create fully detoxified anti-cancer estrogens 950% more effectively than placebo. So uh, <clears throat> very effective and great research behind it. Is that the Ganoderma as well? Or some other medicinal mushroom? Not, not in that functional food. So what's very fascinating about Ganoderma is it traditionally has been very, very bitter. Uh, and it was very hard to put into functional foods. So I have found a company that patented a process by which they're able to extract all of the nutrients from Ganoderma get all the health benefits, but basically resolve the bitterness. Uh, and, and that's really a, a, a bit of magic because when you can make something taste good, now we can get little kids to do it consistently uh, and they tend to be picky, right? especially those that are in the autism spectrum. And we're seeing profound changes as they begin to nourish themselves ideally. And would this be the Organo King Coffee? One of my favorites? That's one of them. Right? So the king of coffee is a functional coffee. It, it technically falls into that category. There's over 3,000 studies on functional coffees, by the way. Uh, but it goes back to 1,100 people adding things to coffee to boost up its superpowers. But Ganoderma, I, I like to tell people it eliminates all of the negative of coffee, including the acid within it, which is very uh, disruptive to a lot of people. Uh, and then adds all the benefits of Ganoderma in something that people do daily. So the king of coffee is the premium, 
But when we start talking about autistic kids, there's spore capsules, Ganoderma spores, which by the way, there's three parts of the, of the plant, the mycelium, the flowering body and the spores. The spores have the greatest nutrient density, uh, but this company has created a functional hot chocolate for kids, which is blood sugar friendly and even a functional shake. So uh, that's what we tend to do for kids with autism because they tend to have a, a very uh, strong taste aversion. Yeah, definitely. And I only became aware of um, Organo as a company like six months ago. And I had, I just kept seeing it everywhere and different people that I followed. Um, you know, when you hear something multiple times or it keeps coming across your path, it's definitely something to look into. So that's what happened with me. And I was a little bit kind of skeptical at first because of the whole coffee thing. I, I was very caffeine sensitive. Um, and also with the medicinal mushroom side of things, I was struggling with candida and mold illness. So I was thinking, is this going to be a good product for me? Um, but after implementing it's implementing it into my routine, I had to start slow because it is a powerful kind of drink and supplement at the same time. But it's made the biggest difference and now I'm recommended to everyone. And that's part of the reason that I wanted to have you on to talk about these products in a little bit more detail. But how did you get into kind of working with Organum in the first place? And how long ago was this? You know, it was nine years ago. And, uh, you know, my, my son was in high school at the time and, and someone had introduced him to the product and he came home, he was very excited. And, you know, he told me about it. He said, dad, I, I think you should sell this in your clinic. And I told him outright, no, absolutely not. You know, I'm, I'm not selling coffee in my clinic. And he said, well, dad, you should at least look into it. You know, and, and he just gave me a very superficial introduction to it. Then when I saw what it was USDA certified organic and infused with Ganoderma, also organic, I said, wow, this has got to be a better product. And I, I told him, I said, you know, Jacob, I'm very busy. I don't need anything else to do. But if you can find a way to put it in my clinic where I don't have to do anything, then go ahead and do that. So he literally, he created a little sign on his computer and put a water boiler and some samples in the waiting area. Then he told my staff, he says, look, you know, when people come in, offer them a cup of coffee or tea. And there's a very important pro tip on that. The most popular coffee in the world, by the way, is espresso. Our pre-brewed coffee, you can make it espresso strong by using just a little bit of water, or you can make it more dilute by adding more water. Um, but my staff would make patients uh, a cup of coffee while they were waiting. And after they had a few sips, they would ask, how do you like that? And they would usually say, this is really good. At which point my staff would say, this is really good for you too. You should get a box. So the first month that we had samples in the clinic, we sold over $1,000 in coffee and tea, zero effort on my part. Then it went to 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, you know, $10,000 a month. And you begin to realize, wow, people really like this. And then I started sharing it outside of the practice. Uh, and it's been a, you know, just an absolutely fantastic boom in terms of health and business for, for myself and, and many people I'm connected to. And the biggest difference that I found was the taste because I've tried other mushroom coffee brands before, particularly the Four Sigmatic brand. I know that's um, quite big in the US yes. and it tasted horrible in my opinion. I was just, I was thinking of the benefits like holding my nose, trying to drink it. Um, but with King Coffee and some of the other products, you literally can't taste them. But apart from the taste difference, what's the difference between taking a Reishi capsule or one of these other brands versus kind of the process and um, processing that Organo does. So I, I actually want to expand on that a little bit because it's very, very important. So in our intro, I mentioned that Organo basically found a way to get all the nutrition without having the bitter flavor, which is overpowering even in coffee. But they have two patented processes. One process is by which they extract the nutrition. The second is by which they pull the acids out of the coffee. And this is very, very important because every single enzyme and we can even talk hormones too, because ultimately we're gonna to lead to that. Every enzyme and every hormone in the body is dependent upon the amount of acid in the system. And when the body has ideal acid alkaline balance, things work ideally, or as we become too acid, which is the direction people move, then things become inefficient. So by pulling the acid out of the coffee in their pre-brewing patented process, they maximize the action of the nutrients and the enzymes within the body. So even if someone took some Ganoderma and put it in regular coffee, it wouldn't have the same impact in the body as getting our Ganoderma coffee because of the acid alkaline difference. 
And so uh, we really own that market space. Four Sigmatic and other companies have done a good job saying this is really, really popular, but they are copycat products and they can't copy the patent. And you know, their success has been nowhere near uh, Organos quite simply because their products just don't pass the taste test. You, know, you might get a few people that'll do it for the health benefit, but if they compare our coffee to Four Sigmatic or other competitors side by side, so far, I, I've seen 100% of people say, no, no, your coffee tastes much better. And it's a top criteria. And are there any other um, products or benefits from using the, I think you described them as the fruiting body and the mycelium as opposed to the spores? Do you ever use them for other things or are the spores really where the magic's um, at? Well, what master herbalists will tell you is that each part of the plant has a different biochemical uh, footprint, so to speak, and therefore different action. And so traditionally the mycelium, the root system is actually known to be the internet of the entire earth. And there's a, a great movie called Fantastic Fungi that talks about that. The flowering body still has all the nutrition. That's what's called the Ganoderma lucidum. But some of the components within the, the nutrient profile are 75 times more concentrated within the spores which by the way is what's in the king of coffee and the green tea. So my go-to is the spores, but there are some people that take the mycelium and they say, you know, I have a better and more apparent calming within my brain. And I like to say that the Ganoderm lucid the flowering body, which is much less expensive, is the poor man's version, but still very, very effective. Ultimately, everything's a clinical trial. You know, people should try each component and see how they feel. And if they feel better on one, you know, it, it might be a forever thing or it might just be a now thing based on their chemistry. But, you know, we're, we're always trying and, and hopefully seeing what impacts our body and, and we stay with that which works best for us and, and evolve over time. I personally reached out to you a couple of weeks ago asking about my own health results, lab results that I got with um, low levels of natural killer cells. Um, and this isn't a new thing I had this um, found last year as well when testing for Lyme and co-infections and low NK cells and CD57 can be a common um, result of Lyme and it can prevent you from overcoming it as well. It's like a vicious cycle. And I'd heard that the spore capsules were particularly beneficial for increasing. So I'm gonna be starting on those over the next couple of weeks, but with certain herbs and supplements and the immune system, it can kind of skew it too much one way or another. So it can not be recommended to someone with one type of autoimmune condition, but beneficial for another. So what's the difference between reishi and maybe something like um, a different herb, like astragalus with them being not recommended for certain conditions? So what, what's fascinating about reishi, the top superfood on the planet, is there are molecules that can actually pick up certain aspects of the immune system and molecules that can calm it down. And there's the wisdom of nature. So when you look at the medical literature, it is known as an immune modulator. And so what I tell people is that you can have an immune system which is too low or too high, and it can be too low against foreign cells or too low against your own cells. By the way, if it's too low against foreign cells, you're prone to infection. If it's too low against your own cells, you're prone to cancer, or it could be too high. If it's too high against things outside the body, we call that an allergy. If it's too high within the body, it's called an autoimmunity. And there was a very technical article that broke down the uh, how Ganoderma specifically functions as an immune modulator, but literally there are fat soluble components of the mushroom that act to pick up the immune system, water-soluble components that act to calm it down, and in the wisdom of the body interacting with the plants, the body knows what to do with it. In fact, that's a law in Chinese medicine, the law of deficiency it says the body will take whatever you give it and use it for its best purpose. When Ganoderma is that complete, the body knows whether it needs to pick up one aspect or, or calm down another, and it is in the medical literature as a universal immune modulator. And the data is that it can use to treat and or prevent autoimmune disease. So uh, what nature is profoundly smart. And, and when we work with it, we tend to do a whole lot better than when we, when we try to you know, go around it or work against it. And I've definitely got that high and low immune system going on. So my innate immune system 
is uh, quite suppressed at the moment due to potentially Lyme and mold exposure in like the past few years. But I'm also very over sensitive and very reactive with mast cell and histamine reactions. So that was what was very confusing to me, how I could have both at the same time. But I've actually realized it's very common. It is. And you're going to find over time, and we can even talk a little later, but you know, there's four universal immune modulators. And, and since we're in, informing the world, uh, the adrenal molecule DHEA is, a, is an immune modulator. Vitamin D is an immune modulator. And then there's another Chinese botanical known as perilla seed. Uh, and when I put people on an immune balancing protocol, I use all four for the fastest and most complete results. Do you use any other medicinal mushrooms like chaga or lion's mane? So right now, lion's mane and turkey tail are, are both being part of a new cognition drink that will get to Europe soon, uh, but it, it works remarkably well. So, uh, you know, I'm open to all superfoods and certainly I've, I'm a big fan of medicinal mushrooms. It's the delivery system of the organo products, you know, the coffee and tea that make it, you know, such a, such a big win among my patient base. And is it like with some other supplements, you have to be taking them for several months in order to start to see benefits or can you start to notice changes big or small sooner? The majority of people notice changes within the first week. And when I say the majority, I'm not talking 51%. I mean, somewhere between 80 and 90% within the first week. And there's enough people that notice a difference in their very first dose. So pretty fascinating. Have you, know, you got this, any this case studies? Because I'll give my overview, my experience as well. So very sensitive, caffeine sensitive. When I'd have coffee in the past, because I'm sensitive to mold as well, I, I would react to some and be fine with others. So the quality is really important. And I've been absolutely fine with the Organo King coffee. And I'm glad to have coffee back in my life. Um, but previously, if I'd have coffee, it'd have to be around 9 a.m. right after breakfast. And then I just have to limit myself to the one. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to sleep at 10 p.m. And multiple times, I don't do this all the time. Um, I'd have it at like 4 p.m., the King coffee, and sleep like a baby. Like no jitters, no crash, stable energy, stable mood. So it's that um, Ganoderma within that that kind of calms the immune system. Similar to green tea and matcha, it's got that caffeine in there. It gives you that energy buzz but it's got the L-theanine to kind of calm you down at the same time. You know, there's great buffering effects and, and what you're reporting is what we see at least 90% of the time, people that are caffeine sensitive, their very first cup of organo coffee is fine for them. The, the one in 10 that still can't have that very first cup, we put them on the capsules for about a week. And so far in my nine years, I have not found a single person that after dosing capsules for a week that they, you know, they were fine then with coffee, even for ex those that are extreme caffeine sensitive. So the balancing properties are there and, and very, very powerful. So the, the capsules have just got the spores in there, whereas the, the sachets of the king have the coffee and the spores. Correct. Yes. And is there like an equivalent? So how many, how many um, sachets of king would like one capsule equate to? So, I'm going to give a politically correct answer because what happened is a lot of companies are trying to be copycats of Organo, right? Organo was first, Four Sigmatic followed that, and they're saying, well, we use one more milligram than, than Organo does. But uh, so I can't give you the exact amount, even though I know it, but let's just say that a king of coffee is about the equivalent of a capsule. Okay. And what about dietary mushrooms? Is are the benefits just not on the level of these um, medicinal mushrooms or can you still get benefits in like regular white button mushrooms, for example? Well, mushrooms are very good foods. You know, they're, they're a great protein source. They have their own botanical mix and, and it's very favorable for a lot of people. But a food mushroom is very, very different than a medicinal mushroom. So we're comparing a food to a superfood. And, and so the superfood is literally awkward above in terms of health benefit, but mushrooms are still very good food sources. Mm -hmm. And what about dosing? Would it be something that you could take year long and not really run into any negative issues? Or do you recommend like other things cycling on and off, maybe cold and flu season or during times of stress? Um, and are there any downsides to taking medicinal mushrooms? Well, I, I've had it daily, multiple times a day for nine straight years. And, and you know what I can tell you is I'm better, stronger, faster, smarter, literally than nine years ago. 
Uh, it is such a good product, modulating the inflammatory process, supporting detoxification, alkalizing the system, killing off stealth infections, et cetera. But when you look at the long history of reishi, which is over 4,000 years of documented human use, you know, originally it was reserved for the royal family of China. And if someone was caught with reishi that was not part of the royal family or part of a group, you know, to harvest the reishi, first offense, they'd cut their arm off. Second offense, they'd cut their head off. And the royal family would, would dose it consistently daily throughout their entire life. And, you know, they had a different model back then, but, you know, the, these emperors lived into their 80s, and we're talking 4,000 years ago, and at 80 years old, they were considered godlike, and they were supposed to pass on their DNA, so they literally had over 1,000 mistresses, uh, and, you know, the, reportedly, they were still very uh, functional at 80, right, we'll just put it that way, so, you know, definitely this herb has something to do uh, with that, and, and it was prized. What about children? I know there's lots of parents listening and with certain herbs, you, it's not recommended to take them um, under the age of like 18 or 16. Is there an age that's too early or what about um, really young children and toddlers? So one, it's perfectly safe in pregnancy and nursing moms. And I have two beautiful granddaughters. And so my daughter-in-law was, was you know, consuming Ganoderma products consistently so she had Ganoderma on board when she conceived. She had a beautiful pregnancy, an easy delivery, and a beautiful baby. My daughter, the same thing. So literally, we're talking about fetuses that were exposed to wonderful superfoods from the moment of conception. And I know everybody likes to think that their grandchildren are, are just the absolute best and most exceptional. Uh, and we should feel that way. But I can tell you that my granddaughters are profoundly healthy, very advanced, and it was so nice to see my daughter-in-law and daughter have beautiful pregnancies and easy deliveries and, and wonderful children. Yeah, that's so great. I plan, it's not going to be for another good few years, but I definitely plan on taking it just because of the sheer amount of health benefits. But I do want to go into some of the maybe research and health benefits in a little bit more detail, starting with hormonal health, with this being the Hormones in Harmony podcast. So a lot of women listening struggle with PMS or estrogen dominance maybe anxiety, depression, um, acne, skin issues, how can Ganoderma and re or Reishi affects and improve um, these types of conditions? So you asked a lot in that single question, and I'll, I'll go back to a, a PhD researcher that in the 1990s made this statement. His name was Harry Eidner, and he said, you know, we are swimming in a sea of estrogens. There's estrogens in plastics, estrogens in pesticides, estrogens injected into animals, and there are even metalloestrogens. We now define lead, cadmium, and mercury as metalloestrogens, and the medical literature says that the modern skeleton has 500 to 1,000 times the, the lead of, of pre-industrialized humans. So Ganoderma is proven to help clear out these xenoestrogens. Um, and Xeno is spelled with an X and it literally means foreign estrogens. And, and the one that's most profoundly studied is something called bisphenol A uh, and Ganoderma helps to clear that very effectively. So when you start clearing out these toxic estrogens, you allow the biologic estrogens to work more effectively. When we look at estrogens that are naturally made, uh, there's a couple of things we wanna talk about with that. So, you know, females are certainly gonna make an abundance of estrogens there was a researcher in the early 2000s who would make the statement, you know, estrogens, whether you make them, whether you take them, you need to get rid of them every day. And I tweaked that to say estrogens, whether you make them, whether you take them, whether you're knowingly or unknowingly intoxicated by them, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, you need to get rid of them every day in a healthy way. So there's 11 different liver enzymes that start the process of estrogen clearance and then there's what's known as glucuronidation, sulfation, and methylation. If we have biochemical nerds, they'll, they'll get that. That's phase two of liver detoxification. So, um, you know, we want to completely detoxify the estrogens and Ganoderma supports that process all the way through. But here's an interesting curveball, and it's very easy to verify in PubMed. When women have the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene, which is strongly associated with higher level of risk of breast cancer, when they drink six or more cups of coffee, we're just talking regular coffee per day, 
there's 69% less onset of breast cancer. And again, from my biochemical friends on this, what we know is that caffeine is processed by a liver enzyme called cytochrome P451A2. So that enzyme gets picked up and that is the enzyme that's most effective at clearing estrogen in a healthy way. And caffeine has a biochemical uh, name of trimethylxanthine. So there's three methyl groups present to help clear these estrogens. And so here's a, here's a simple answer. When people drink coffee, they clear estrogens more effectively. When they drink organo coffee, it's much more effective because they alkalize the system and have the full complement of nutrients to help the body clear it. Another nutrient that's strongly associated with PMS and anxiety is vitamin B6. And so, you know, Ganoderma is going to have some B6 for people that have PMS. I actually recommend more. And I really like the activated form called pyridoxal 5 phosphate. And so, um, by the way, PMS, some people say that PMS stands for please make it stop. Others say it stands for pyridoxine makes sense. B6 is called pyridoxine. Pyridoxine makes sense. It's absolutely proven to help the body clear the estrogens and to buffer the anxiety component. So, you know, there, there's so many wonderful ways to help women and men. And by the way, uh, when we start talking males, testosterone is a precursor of estrogen. Body fat has an enzyme called aromatase. Aromatase converts testosterone to estrogen. So when we lean out more effectively, we have less estrogens. And it's, the data is now clear that estrogen is a strong risk factor for male prostate cancer along with female breast cancer. So we want to clear these estrogens effectively. And apart from lowering the overall estrogen um, and body fat, because that can make estrogen as well through the adipose tissue, are there any other mechanisms that Ganoderma can help with um, metabolic health and healthy weight management and maybe um, thyroid function and those types of things? All of the above. And, and so again, over 1900 medical studies on Ganoderma. Uh, and one thing is that it's profoundly alkaline. It's actually considered the most alkaline food on the planet. And we'll go back to the fact that every hormone and every enzyme is acid alkaline dependent. So as we start idealizing the pH within the body, we get better hormonal action. And that's important. You know, a lot of people have heard the term insulin resistance. It means it takes more insulin to get the job done. Uh, more people actually have cortisol resistance, by the way, and that's also in the medical literature. So we, we run on a higher level of stress hormones. But if we don't get the response from the tissue that we're looking for, the body then will make more hormones and stress the, the organ system. So that can stress the ovaries in terms of estrogens and progestins. That can certainly stress the thyroid. And everything is interconnected. So estrogens, by the way, increase a protein in the blood called thyroid hormone binding globulin. And that just does just what it name says, it binds thyroid hormone uh, and therefore makes it less available. So women have 600% more hypothyroid circumstances than men. And the most common cause of thyroid dysfunction is actually autoimmunity. And the medical literature says this, estrogens promote autoimmunity, whereas androgens protect against autoimmunity. And we know that high estrogen levels um, can be a huge factor for things like breast cancer and um, prostate cancer, as you mentioned before. Can we safely say that Ganoderma is anti-cancerous or is that not allowed in the, in the medical world? Oh, you know what? If you typed in Ganoderma and cancer in PubMed, uh, you know, so far I've found at least 16 different cancers that Ganoderma has direct action against. And I'll, I'll take a slight tangent. I attended a, a cancer lecture about 30 years ago and a PhD researcher named Dean Black walked into a group of 200 doctors and he asked a really profound question. Uh, and this question had such a big impact on me. I've asked it many thousands of times since, but he asked the question, how does a hurricane start? And the answer he wanted was a hurricane starts when conditions are just right. He then asked, how does a tornado start? Well, same answer. Tornadoes start when conditions are just right. How does cancer start? Cancer starts when conditions are just right. And those conditions are well-documented, low oxygen, low nutrients, high acid, chronic inflammation and immune suppression, usually secondary to chronic distress. Then his next question was, how does cancer go away? 
we change the conditions and cancer goes away. Uh, and by the way, I've given many international lectures on cancer and the data is they strongly suggest that nearly everybody, and I mean 99.9% .9 of people walking around make somewhere between 500 and 1000 cancer cells a day. So it's a normal process in our body to make these cells, but it's also normal for the immune system to kill these cells. And so when we keep the body healthy and balanced, cancer is not an issue we have to get significantly out of balance for an extended period of time for cancer to happen, but it can still go away under the right conditions. That's the thing people in the sixties and above, they just think they randomly get cancer out of the blue, but they don't realize it's actually been manifesting potentially since the twenties and sooner. So what you're doing now, because most of my listeners are premenopausal, so probably 18 to 35 ish. What you do now not only is going to help with your period problems and fertility and those things, you're actually having a positive influence on your future health and risk of chronic disease. You know, and, and that's very well said. And, and let's just take that an, another step. If they're 18 to 35, they're childbearing years. And what we know is that healthier mothers have healthier babies. And, and so we want to buffer their stress. We want to eliminate their toxins. We want to alkalize their system. We want to modulate their inflammatory process. We want to optimize their immune system. And a comprehensive program does that. And the one plant that's known to do that more than any other plant on the planet just happens to be Ganoderma. And what are some of these other factors that contribute to excess acidity in the body? Or phrased another way, what are some of the biggest stressors to our immune system that's maybe contributing to the rise of these chronic diseases and autoimmune conditions? So a couple different questions, but I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn back the clock to 1989. And there was an article in the medical literature called The Deadly Quartet. And they said if you had high blood pressure, high insulin, high cholesterol, uh, and excess body fat, you were going to die early. They call that the deadly quartet. But, you know, I looked at that and I thought, no, those are all effects. The true deadly quartet is stress, toxins, malnutrition, and physical inactivity. And those are things that we can intervene on. So how about stress? Well, I think a lot of people feel that their stress is much higher because of, you know, policies more than anything at this point in time, but we can always buffer our stress. When we, when we breathe, we actually, the process of taking a deep breath is absolutely known in that moment to reduce the stress within the body. And that's one of the things that Navy SEALs are taught to do when they're in the heat of battle. They're taught to just take a deep breath because it does center the mind, body, and spirit. Everything works together. You know, you can, you can be an optimist. By the way, optimists do live longer. That's, that's also proven. It's a very positive in our brain chemistry, body chemistry, and immune chemistry, but you wanna have a positive outlook. You wanna you want to breathe appropriately. And as I tell people, you wanna eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right every single day. So we wanna buffer our stress with the right attitude, the right circumstances, the right nutrition, the right lifestyle. When we start looking at toxins, there's toxins that are absolutely unavo unavoidable. There are over 80,000 registered toxic chemicals uh, and there was a study by a group called the Environmental Working Group. Now it was about a decade ago, but they looked at umbilical cord blood from women all over the U.S. And they found out every single baby, every single umbilical cord that they looked at, the babies were exposed to more than 200 toxins before they ever took their first breath. So you can use clean household products. You can get time in nature where you're actually breathing clean air. You can eat organic foods, non-genetically modified, and you'll minimize your toxins. When we start talking about malnutrition, we didn't talk about the food pyramid. You want good foods. If God made it, it's okay. If man made it, stay away. You know, eat food, not too much, mostly plants, and then superfoods, functional foods, multivitamin, probiotics, omega-3s, D3, uh, and then we cover our nutrition base. And then when it comes to exercise, we just need to move more. You know, it was actually estimated that just 200 years ago, the average person moved, literally moved their body about 60 hours a week. That's how much time they spent in movement. And now if, if people you know, exercise an hour a day, four days a week, they think they're physically active. Well, four hours versus 60 hours is not very active at all. So we wanna find ways to move better and, and move more.
And it doesn't have to be because I know some people push it to the extremes and maybe some of the athletes that you've worked with, it actually becomes more of a stress and it causes more inflammation on the body, especially if they're not balancing it out with optimal recovery and a great diet, et cetera. Um, so yeah, just, it doesn't need to be at the gym. It can be going out in nature and therefore you're getting like a two in one benefit. You're getting the sunshine, the fresh air and the movement. And that's really how our ancestors were designed to live and thrive. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I still have people, you know, that are, that are farmers or ranchers and, you know, they would ask the question, why would anybody ever need to go to the gym? You should get enough exercise in what you do. And they certainly do. They're very fit. They're very strong because they're used their body consistently. Absolutely. And I always finish up Dr. Bob with just a few more questions for you personally. So the first one sure. is what's one thing that you do daily to stay in hormonal harmony I'm guessing the, um, ganod the use of Ganoderma is going to be up there, but is there anything else that you do every day? You know, it wouldn't be just one thing, but I do have a morning routine where I optimize the Magnificent Seven. Literally, I eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right as part of my day. Uh, and, and so, by the way, for me, eating right, I started, uh, you know, intermittent fasting, uh, you know, about a year and a half ago. And I can tell you the data is very, very good on that. So in my case, eating right is not eating at all in the morning. Uh, I usually don't eat before noon, but you can have a Ganoderma coffee to alkalize the system, to hydrate, to get the antioxidants, to energize, et cetera. Um, but I'm definitely going to incorporate all of that in the morning routine. And my first hour is dedicated to literally energizing and centering my mind, body, and spirit and being focused on what I want to achieve during the day. So uh, even though it's a, it's a very comprehensive morning routine, I'll say the one thing that I do every day, non-negotiable, is execute that morning routine. And you just answered my second question within that because it was going to be, what's your go-to breakfast? But it doesn't sound like you have breakfast. So what would be your first meal and what time roughly do you break your fast? So most days around noon and my first meal is going to be a salad. You know, I'm going to use a, a mix of organic greens. I'm going to use a mix of nuts. I put on peppers and onions and almost always my first meal is a salad. You get that good fiber, uh, you get those good phytonutrients. The nuts are, are nutrient dense enough. They, you know, they give the contrast, that nice crunch. The peppers are there. It's a very colorful salad. And that's almost always my first meal. Yeah, you're eating the rainbow. And last question is, um, where can people find more from you online? So you, if they wanted to work with you as a practitioner, but also the organo products, um, how can people learn more about that if they're interested? So my website is thedrbob.com, T-H-E-D-R-B-O-B.com. And that's a very good way to get a, a hold of me. For your listeners, you know, they should really reach out to you for the organo products. So what's your website for that? Yeah, it's vivanaturalhealth.myorganogold.com. So I'll put my link in the episode show notes, but it's also linked through on Instagram as well. I'm sure people are going to, they, they hear me talk about it all the time, but they're more likely to try it out now that you've given us the science. I just tell them it tastes delicious and it's good for you. So give it a try, but you've, you've come with the research and all of that. So I really appreciate it. And all the work that you do in terms of education and really you really are changing the world one coffee at a time. So thank you so much, Dr. Bob. And it was great connecting with you today. Well, an absolute joy. You know, uh, when you, when we first connected, I said, this is absolutely my favorite thing to do. It's a treat. I love that you're making the world better. It's exciting being in business with you. And, and certainly I look forward to more conversations in the future. Amazing. Thank you so much.